when KSV Black is left with having to defend more than just their own honor. I can imagine that with that pressure that this is going to be a very momentum focused match. It very much is going to be and uh, you know in the past we have heard from you know some of the Korean commentators that it did feel like the mentality was often game one indicated a lot for a series that starting things off into your favor was very very important and so I raise a lot of questions when it comes to what map we're going to be starting on. The biggest one is if this kicks off on Infernal Shrines because it is an overlapping map preference for both of the two teams and that again the reverse sweep momentum of Dignitas if somehow game one starts there and we see KSV struggle it I feel like could change the entire mentality for both of these teams. Yeah when we look at this tournament and how long it's been going on maps have been such an important part of the strategy for these teams. Switching up bands, switching up what you're picking just to try to throw off your opponents, but importantly, to try to give as little damage oh. as possible. Team Dignitas chooses Infernal Shrines. In the face of KSV, who has banned Tomb, Dignitas also banned Battlefield of Eternity. They change their always warhead all the time for the second time in this tournament that is notable. Wow, this is huge. This is a huge call out from Team Dignitas. Team Dignitas relying on that streak of momentum that they've gotten. This is the biggest map priority that KSV Black currently has. This is their home turf. And if you look at their past track record, when they got that win streak you were referring to before, this was the map you went to. You do not take KSV here, but Europe is willing to get the call out and start things off. The draft already underway. Genji is going to be taken away. ETC here for Dig and Lucio, that snap pickup for KSV Black. Now I wonder how many of the strategies Team Dignitas have shown are worrisome enough to KSV to change up their draft. Do KSV walk into this series, the grand finals of the Gold Club World Championship, and treat it like other series that we've seen from them before, where they just feel they are straight up the better mechanical team, and they can draft just about anything but getting something that of like their double reset compositions, and just outplaying their opponents in team fights, relying on their ability to do that so well, or if there's anything that's terrifying enough from Team Dignitas that they've shown that they would take away. They're at least going to ban the Genji, and this has been focused on both from Fnatic trying to take it away from them, also from Ballistics, though Ballistics also has high priority on Genji, so that will be out for Dig. I really appreciate the Lucio pickup too for KSV. It's going to really aid in those rotations between the lanes, something that Dignitas stuck to heavily in their performance against against Ballistics in that last series. Does it force the high Uther? Greymane's the first pickup, and no, sticking to the macro game, locking in that Dahaka. We did see, though, over the last series, as things kind of moved on and evolved through that draft, Azalea and friends were suddenly, if we do not have the Lucio, we need to be concerned towards that. That being said, also, Tyrael was a bit higher priority in those type of situations mm -hmm. as well. So could be sort of part of the reason we see these adjustments. May still see Poiks. Gul Dan later on too from that, but there's still the opportunity for Team Dignitas to also move into a Falstad. They've done this a couple times now on this map, and just in general, in places where they need the strong disengage and then can rely on those two globals to make sure that they're winning in the macro game or at least keeping up with their opponents in the macro game. That worked out really well versus Fnatic. There were some times when Snitch got caught on his Falstad versus Ballistics, but if KSV moves into that death ball team fight comp that they've played so much, that might be an opportunity for Team Dignitas to pick up their fall stat again. Yeah, I feel like that's going to be picked up and confirmed right here, probably with like that Arthas, or no, instead going with the fall, so a double support likely. I, I guess I don't want to feel comfortable co to totally committing to it, but one of the few cases where it seems like double support is still holding its own is with on bigger maps where you can get that cycling of the pressure onto the front walls with the hyper carry of the Vala. Vala also has been a higher priority here for Korea over almost every other region that yes. they've been willing to. Uh, in this case, we see the gray main taken away into the Vala, but there's been about three to four drafts where they say Vala is greater than that of gray main. So I think KSV has got to be very thankful that they ended up getting that in that rotation. Even with things like an Abathur and having gray main up, Vala still taken. But what this does do is kind of make the double global even more of an opportunity for Team Dignitas. If KSV want to play that double support uh, amoeba style composition with Vala focusing on her, maybe Team Dignitas can just out-rotate that with their globals. For now, they do have Dahaka taken away from Rich. And up next, a ban likely to be a Rich hero at this point. No, it'll be Ariel as making sure that 
the uh, second support of choice not available for KSV. Yeah, you can see Dignitas is very aware of that situation with that double support composition, and KSV responds perfectly here, I feel, with that band, getting rid of the Ghoul Dang because it's a great counter to that double support hyper carry Vala sieging, cycling front walls, as I was referring to before. And there is a very fast pickup now for Dignitas. Moving into that Uther, again, talked about that trade-off that we've seen from them. But they get themselves a very late Abathur, which is pretty rare in this tournament so far. It is, he has been a hot topic for all of these teams. But it's always a focus from Team Dignitas on that map, on this map. A lot of bans on Abathur, and especially in the secondary phase. KSV not banning that, and Dig not banning it either. Dig knowing that they're in the second pick position, they can get it as such a good synergy with Greymane. They'll get that, and now they have a great Protect the Green main style of composition to brawl. Finally, Tassadar and Sonya as the last two picks from KSV. Once they see the Ariel remove, Tassadar does stand out pretty heavily there. It's been a pretty common pairing that we've seen. It's an old one, but it you know it turns out it's a, it's a pretty quality strategy. Tassadar plus Sonya, Tassadar plus your hyper carry with that double supporting. A lot of, you know, still that pressure onto the front walls. Not as much, but then now it translates to skirmishing capabilities. And more importantly, the shrine control. Dignitas, though, is winning pretty consistently, especially into the later stages of the game with this draft on late game macro. Mm -hmm. uh, not so much on rotation but at least soaking, pressuring uh, onto the waves. If they can find themselves, you know, a way to just at least hold their own into these team fights and shrine fights, I really feel like this composition uh, could be problematic for KSV. Yeah, and a KSV having that Sonya in the late game, they'll be looking for those potential brawls, and that's something that Dig could try to abuse, knowing that they do have that global pressure. Dignitas with our final pick. We're looking for a JPL hero. We got the Garrosh back again. He made so many fantastic Garrosh plays versus Ballistics. He was making some huge plays, but I will say that considering the draft slot being the last pick, like it was against Ballistics on Tower or on Tomb of the Spider Queen, it was a very different case. That was into a double reset composition on a map where you typically can argue Garrosh is standout already. This is not a double reset composition on the other side. Yes, there is a few targets that will be vulnerable to that hard crowd control, but it does not scream the level of brilliance and innovation like the last Garrosh here from Dignitas. Not saying that it's a bad pick, it's just not nearly as, oh, that was cleverly done as we saw before. Yeah, but what we know from Garrosh at this tournament is that he can be very effective at the counter seat and having the Vala, Tassadar, and the Lucio. Really, it's the Vala, Tass, uh, hard to push from them. Early on, KSV will have to more cautiously do that now, and that gives Dignitas time to start to ramp up into the later stages when they have that Abathur coming online. And one thing that I want to already like highlight here is that with we'll be going on to the Dahaka, if they we see them properly, you know, getting that split put pressure onto the map, I, and not just because I think it might be a concern for the composition that KSV has, even though they are. I, I would say the best macro team at this tournament, though they don't hyper-focus on it. Their Merc Tamp timings are legitimately near flawless, yes. it feels. I do think that that might be a struggle here for KSV to get into a lose-lose scenario because since we've seen Wubby transfer over to Dig, it seems like the decision-making and kind of chess that is the later stages of the game has drastically improved because of his solo lane, I mean, competency. Yeah, I feel like Wubby is one of the best performing people here at this event. But honestly, I, I look at Team Dignitas and I feel the same thing about Poik too. If Snitch is working out really well. Zalia, this guy here, made a colossal role swap for the second time uh, in his career with Team Dignitas alone. It is, it, it's one of those things where I've looked at Team Dignitas and I've asked, how did they get here? How did Dig make it to the grand finals? with a role swap and two roster swaps. And part of what I think is working out so well for them is that they have immediate faith in these new members and in Zalia's role swap to let them play the things that allow them to carry this team. That there is no hesitation on, oh, can he play this or should we kind of put that trust into it? They just go, no, we, we know that we chose this roster for a very specific reason. And I agree with you. I think that it is that faith that within the team, the blind trust that seems like it takes months to build up for these teams. You know, you get into the habits, the rituals, understanding what the teams are going to be looking to do. But Dignitas just goes, nope, we figured it out since square one. KSV Black. In the blue, Sake playing Tassadar, Rich on Sonya, Kyocha on Lucio, Tist playing Murden, and Reset on Vala.
And here they are, Team Dignitas. We've got Zalia there on Uther, Poik on Greymane, Wubby playing the Dahaka, JPL on Garrosh, and Snitch on the Slug playing the Avatar. He'll be busting out that Greymane clone, and with two Greymane, awesome Greymane players, this should work out very well for Team Dignitas, but is it enough? To get a victory on KSV, so far the only team to win games from KSV has been Dignitas' counterpart from Europe at this tournament, Fnatic. Even at BlizzCon, it was Fnatic. So let's see what Dignitas can bring to them here in this final best of five of the Gold Club World Championship. We still see the trending Abathur Shield build here for Team Dignitas. They were something they used against Ballistic pretty effectively as well. Other than that, talents and builds really, I, I, you know, even when I talk about this standout here, it's, it feels like this is becoming the meta here for Abathur. And all the other talents though, everyone's sticking to the norm. Nothing too crazy for these teams as they're looking to maybe bring the battle. Normally we would expect with Dignitas getting this Abathur composition that they should be struggling into the early game. That cycling of pressure I feared with this double support Vala carry composition of KSV will accent the weakness of Dignitas' composition. So I think it is really on them to kind of be forcing the hand at least levels like 1 through 7. Probably pre and post at least the first shrine phase. Well, they're going to start to push up this mid, and we'll see if they can find anyone in a position with the rotations to do just that, get the punishment. Maybe with that Garrosh over the wall. Kyocha was watching out for that. Boops back JPL just to keep reset safe. Reset. Oh! Kyocha! The hat was not enough to be able to get the damage and the kill, but already very aggressive decision-making here and posturing from Team Dignitas. There is one uh, change-up in the talent build, going back to what you were talking about, that I did want to know. No Monster Hunter build for uh, Reset's Vala. We have seen a lot more of that lately, but to see it here, not with an Aureo even, for the build that generally gives more hope is interesting. Looking for more of the spread damage, maybe spread damage on Shrines too. It's a, I, I feel like, oh, hold up here, Dignitas might find somebody. Zalia getting the flank with Poik, but KSV, I mean, they're KSV. They have the map sense, the game sense, understanding that they've been off the map for quite some time. Uh, to be honest, though, I feel like on a map like Inferno Shrines in particular, it's I, I prefer, I, I don't know if I'd say I prefer it, but really do enjoy mm -hmm. the build. Nice sidestep there from Tiss as well. We makes that transition sound. But on the note of how effective has been this early game so far for KSV, I've got to be honest, I mean, it very much is not what they were looking to make happen. It's not so big of a setback that I go, you know, this, this needs to happen for them to to win this game, but it is very, you know, concerning whenever you build a comp with that kind of strength and see that Dignitas is holding their own. Even though that Garrosh pickup has been able to help a bit, I didn't think it would be this effective, at least for the start of this round. Yeah, uh, KSV haven't, didn't go for a tri-lane push uh, really strong, likely because of that Garrosh. Um, instead, just going for the 2-1-2 which did let them try to push the lanes as much as possible, and they make it the Zelia kill here for First Blood. Zelia staying in for a long time before he finally is brought down by KSV. Does buy some time now. JPL and Wubby here against Rich on the Shrine. Rich doing what he can to juke and jive around, dodge until Kyoja can come in with the heals, and he is thrown back, hoping to separate out Rich, but just to make sure that he can't boop anyone back in while KSV rotated in. Yeah, Dignitas there losing this first Punisher should again be kind of expected considering those compositions, but the game comes top only further this here for KSV maybe making up for a little bit of that lack of pressure that we've been talking about the 212 that they kicked off but KSV the reason you do not bring them to this map is because they are far more effective with these punishers than it seems like everyone else is that's the first punisher still maybe a front wall a bit of damage onto the fort but as we see two three four punishers when you normally go this could be a fort they look at it and go this could be game Tiss doesn't go for the loop around to jump in alongside the Punisher, though. Have seen that from him a few times. Here, though, just wanting to make sure that they can maximize the siege during the time that Team Dignitas is defending and sort of defending, you know, with uh, less than you would normally have and having the Abathur needing to scale up. They're using the two man of Sake and Rich to get a lot of damage done in the top while also sieging with what they had in the bottom. And this sets them up potentially for the next shrine if it ends up being in the top. And I'm really glad to see that we do see Rich moving into the Shatter Ground at four. Though again, this is debatably meta for Sonya now, especially considering the map. The biggest thing is with the laning mismatch of the Dahaka versus the Sonya into the one versus one in case that does end up happening. Or if you need to apply pressure into the Abathur and some of the weakness into the mid to late game, it's really going to be able to help there with that wave clear and also the Shrine Control, which is always something you're looking for on the map like 
Inferno Shrine. Dignitas, though, is in fact the one who is demanding response from KSV throughout this early game. Other than that one kill up on top, they took a lot of damage onto the top four. They're taking a lot of damage here onto the bottom four front wall. Very impressive rotations here from Dig. Yeah, there was almost even a kill as JPL was hoping that he could pull someone in with Groundbreaker, but I just realized that another benefit of the build that Vala is going into is with Hot Pursuit, you will have that bonus movement speed yeah. at maximum hatred stacks, and that might be what Reset can use to make sure that he's manipulating his positioning and not falling victim to the combo of JPL. Dignitas looking to get an invade here onto the camp, and it seems like KSV, they sniffed it out, but want nothing to do with it. Because Rich up here is looking to pick up the Shaman Camp. Timing with the Shaman Camp should be very important considering uh, the double global opportunity. I say double global, but more so at least double soak opportunity mm -hmm. here for Dignitas with that Abathur Dahaka. I want to see them at least try and capitalize on using the camp. But now that we see the top shrine is the spawn location here, it's very unlikely that anything is to come of that pressure. Yeah, but this mid has to be dealt with before KSV can rotate up. They'll keep Sh uh, Sonya there, and she's very good at soloing the shrine. Team Dignitas, though, they are just pushing elsewhere on the map, not really contesting, recognizing that the setup is better in the top for KSV. They're going to push in the bottom and see what structural damage they can get done using that bit of time while KSV were still defending versus the double camp in the mid. And really abusing that Abathur mind and that seven talent pickup there uh, to make sure the rotations are a bit too slow. Kyocha once again is going to get a hammer of justice. Poik is getting the flank here. Nice boop there and it doesn't look like JPL will find himself in position. Clever use there of the flask onto that sidewall. Almost enough to seal the deal. Yeah, Poik's been making some pretty darn impressive gray main plays. Hope to see that continue once we start getting into the mid stages of this game and more of the 5v5 fights. KSV just doing their best to defend this fort without taking too much damage, although Tist is starting to rotate in. The respect that Dignitas is just slightly closer to heroic abilities and KSV doesn't have a do uh, global who can come in here. It's Sonya who's all the way up in the top lane and is just going to push along with the Punisher for now. If Dignitas is able to make sure that they do not lose that top four, this would be a very you know optimal situation on how this map had played out. I talked about the first and second trine phase and how I feel like Dignitas should find themselves at least struggle struggling here. They will end up losing the top four, but I genuinely, generally speaking here, this is very much still a how they would assume this map to go and the composition uh, is about to come online. So this has been great for them and the success here again on what feels like the best map for KSV but look at that body block it forces divine shield but the force wall is just keeping him onto the other side there's not enough him. armor in the world here it feels had another stun even using oh. avatar everything KSV committed to try to get that kill on JPL but indomitable used from that having the divine shield outlasting just barely the force wall and finally JPL makes it out alive but there was an Abathur kill. Yeah, Rich ended up finding himself snitched there on that middle fort using the Poison Spear. There's, I mean, no time to be able to survive. Sonya is one of the fastest <laughs> slug killers about in the game, as long as that Ancient Spear does connect. And during this window, KSV is at least taking out the bottom well, providing this pressure towards this bottom front wall. And it's as long as they can capitalize on those kind of, you know, what we generally consider smaller mistakes, like an Abathur getting caught out here into the mid game, uh, KSV is suddenly restoring some of the early game pressure that they needed in this game. Yeah, and if there's any team who's good at punishing other teams, it's probably KSV. Yeah, you know, I would genuinely say that with the, some of the track record and the things that we listed before and why they are such a feared team, a lot of that comes down to they just consistently punish your mistakes over and over again. It is the thing that separates them from the rest of the teams. Mechanically, obviously, outstanding roster, but it really comes down to if you mess up, if you click for that half a pixel too far, they go, well, now you're dead. Yeah, even Reset being as aggressive as he was there, knowing that he had the double support against a Dahaka, that could be pretty scary. He can drag you into the team, but full um, trust in his teammates to keep him safe and in his own abilities to use that hot pursuit and use the movement speed from that to be able to out uh, mechanics, even the best Dahaka potentially in the world. Wubby, he is very good on that hero. Another shrine activating at 13 for KSV. Dignitas has a little ways until they get to that point. Now, if we look at the fact that we moved into the force wall onto KSV with this composition, it shows that they very much want the long sustaining fight and that they wanted to not just immediately kind of collapse over a moment of seconds. And Dignitas, Ultimate Evolution, Isolation, and Divine Shield are generally speaking very immediate team fight spells. So Dignitas, I mean, the window of opportunity and the fights are going to be one to three seconds at best. 
best, but if we see it extend beyond that point, and it's an even trade between the teams, KSV is going to be the one eking ahead. And they're already doing so over these skeletal defenders. Dignitas not showing any interest whatsoever. To be honest, I did expect Dignitas to play passive on these first two shrines, but the third one felt like it was, a, you know, that was the moment where they'd want to force something here because... I mean, KSV, I ta we talked about what they're able to do with these mid-game punishers compared to, it feels like, every other team at this tournament. Yeah, the problem with that is that Dig didn't want to engage into KSV having the talent advantage and had the globals in position to soak, but the Shrine Clear is just so darn good for KSV that they're able to get the punisher that quick. A lot used here just to try to take out Murd, and they don't get it as the sound barrier comes in. Kyoja looking for the boop and the follow-up. Rain of Vengeance from Reset. Wubby seems to be the target, and with the Storm Bolt, just tossed back. Tist has more ideas on his mind. He wants more kills, but it'll help his team out a little bit. Tis goes in there with that dwarf toss. Poik trying to run away, but Kyocha is going to hunt him down, use the boop, and Ridge here is still tracking down Team Dignitas. Zalia friends will be able to make it out. Snitch was getting the soak here, as you see, into the bottom lane, but the Punisher doing work in the mid, already consuming the fort, and it's going to be much more than that. And this, there are still 18 seconds remaining on those death timers here for Dick. That was an amazing team fight for oh. KSV. The pull and the toss comes in. They're just going to turn right on JPL, who's forced to get the Symbiote as well as Divine Shield, but it does keep JPL alive, and he'll get another opportunity for a combo, and now this time they have the follow-up of Greyman coming in, but KSV, they're still going to bring down a key. Punisher leaps here into Zalia, flip onto Ridge, but he's not afraid of anything. Drag does end up landing there. Reign of Engine goes down, buys a bit of peel. The force wall on the other side is going to secure the escape here for KSV. Maybe even dabble and take out that bottom forward as it is easy pickings. It will secure that 16 talent here. Looks like they're going to take a bit more patient rotation there as Dignitas, you can see, trying to hunt them down, get this fight pre-16. But Gilly, you know, I wish I could say that, you know, it was a different story here if you're a Team Dignitas fan. KSV, mid-game punishers, just get more than everyone else. Yeah. And gets themselves that key. It also helps that KSV got the Punisher and at the exact same time also took three kills. You know. They were able to get a very effective Punisher from that, taking out the keep and opening up a way for them to win the game. One of many potentially as with the 16 advantage, they're looking to get more aggressive. They are going to make these more aggressive rotations starting up towards bottom. As we said, picking up that four, but Dignitas is actually... This is a moment where Dignitas is generally making better rotations faster than KSV, even though they are struggling in this game. Uh, identifying that bottom was most likely the easiest weakened siege point for KSV, getting as much pressure with the Greymane on the top to try and get the 16. Now, though, I would like to see Greymane probably try and come back and help with this defense as Abathur and Dahaka should be on doing their best into these later stages to be able to pick up that soak. We'll see what Poik ends up deciding because there's still half a level until Dignitas finds themselves the same talent here. Really, really really nice focus of KSV to get the small wall and make sure that if someone got pulled in that they wouldn't lose anyone to Team Dignitas now. Bottom four, here's the Siege and Dig is again nowhere to be able to be found for that 16. The pull, the flip, Tiss in a bad spot but he's not really too scared. He drops Avatar. Wubby uses the isolation and that's a huge cooldown. Divine Shield's drawn. Kyocha and friends, they're poking around here. They want to see if they can end this game. It drops the sound barrier. Snitch is going to go down, but that is just the clone. Wubby hits the pole, but it's not going to get anything. Flipped in. Rich gets one. He gets Jay, and I think this might be it. Yeah, I think it will be. Rich pretty low, but has the shielding from Tassadar and the healing from Kyocha as KSV confidently gets on the core of Team Dignitas. They have yet to even lose a single member as the Stormwall comes out. Greyman goes down, and so too will the core of Team Dignitas. KSV take game one. Gilly, I asked the question about momentum and posing. How big of an impact Infernal Shrines for game number one would have. But we just watched KSV, KSV 7 to 0, 13 minute game against Team Dignitas. Now, we talked about it. Dig is the team with nothing to lose. So this is very much, you know, not nearly as bad for Dignitas as it would have been if bad for KSV if Dignitas had won. Right. But you still got to be asking about the success rate here through that series after. That was just clean from KSV. Yeah, it's a whole different caliber of opponent of game than even when they played versus 